I have lived a combined 40 years on this planet, and I've come to the realization that there are certain foods I just don't like. In fact, some of them I downright loathe. I'm not sure how I acquired my distaste for these items, but at some point I did, and I have my reasons. Like what? Someone might ask if this happened to be a conversation. I hate bananas. The taste, the texture, the overall demeanor of the fruit. Somehow you're always peeling it wrong, and I'm never sure how to eat it without looking controversial. <laughs> Plus, cats are afraid of them. I dislike pineapple. Any fruit that has that defensive of an outer layer should not be digested. It does not want to let us in, yet we force ourselves. Pineapples are too sweet and overpower any other item they're paired with. If celebrities were fruit, pineapple would be Meryl Streep. <laughs> I can't stand strawberries. When people hear this, they lose their mind. You don't like strawberries? Are you dead? <laughs> it is quite possible that there's nothing in the world more repulsive to me than how a strawberry feels. Over the years, I've become so annoyed defending my hatred for strawberries that I end up just telling people I'm allergic. You don't like strawberries? What is... I have a severe allergy. Oh my God, I'm so sorry for yelling at you. That must be so rough. It is. <laughs> the only other food that comes close to the repellent strawberry is a pickle. To me, pickles are like the band Mumford and Sons. <laughs> the idea makes sense. However, it all looks a little wrong. The follow through is depressing. And just when you think it's gone, the taste comes right back up again. And here's what's great. That metaphor made no sense, yet we all completely understood it. <laughs> in fact, if someone would ever eat just a pickle in front of me, I would leave the room. I hold these truths to be self-imposed. I don't like what I don't like, and no one can change my mind except me. Which brings us to the events of a couple decades ago. The day started like any other day. A groggy disappointment to what my life could have been. On my way to work, this weird feeling came over me, a feeling I'd never experienced before. I wanted food, and my body was confused as to what. I wanted something salty, so chips. No, not chips. I wanted something juicy, liquid chips. <laughs> my brain, stomach, and mouth raced through pictures of foods that were all familiar until they clicked together like a slot machine. I was craving a pickle. Ding, 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 jackpot. I ignored my desire all day thinking it was an anomaly, like my radio career or the 2008 Celtics championship. <laughs> but the next day it happened again, and this time as soon as I woke up. So I thought, well, this is stupid. I should go back to sleep. <laughs> the next day, the craving was even stronger and more specific. I didn't want just a pickle. I wanted a cheeseburger with a pickle on it. Oh, man. Not only did this sound good, it sounded like the best idea anyone ever had ever. That day... I decided on my lunch break I would go to the best burger joint near my work and pick up this heavenly creation. Unfortunately, the area in which I worked didn't lend itself to the creme de la creme of eateries, so I decided to go to the best burger place I knew was close. In and out. <laughs> I walked up to the semi-attractive employee who smiled so big it hurt my face, <laughs> ready to order and in essence change a huge part of my life. Before I opened my, my, my mouth, I had a quick thought. I've never had pickles on an In-N-Out burger before. Do they even have pickles at In-N-Out? I asked the employee as if I was buying drugs. <laughs> um, hey, you guys, uh, you guys got pickles? He quickly returned my intensity by saying, yeah, buddy, yeah, 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 yeah. We got pickles. Relieved, I ordered a double-double, no tomatoes, light onion, add pickles. Now, to be clear, I like tomatoes, but when you're getting a double-double at an In-N-Out, the product is already going to be sloppy, and tomatoes only serve to slide ingredients around like black ice on a dark night in January. <laughs> I didn't want to bite too softly as to cause the tomato to squeeze my pickles out onto my lap, causing a cataclysm of events I was not mentally prepared for. The burger finally came out, and not sure what to do, I just stared at the pickles for a second, quietly telling them, it took me a long time to get here. Don't let me down. I opened wide, assuring I wouldn't get just pickles. And then, now I've had Mario Batali's squab. I've eaten Zach Allen's goat cheese ravioli, and I've been treated to Tom Colicchio's meatloaf sandwich, but I swear, 
on that day as I sat in my truck, nothing in the world could have, maybe never will taste better than a sloppily put together dripping mess that is a double double no tomatoes, light onions with added pickles. <laughs> For somewhere in this flavored land, the sun is shining bright. The chefs are cooking somewhere, and somewhere bellies are light, and somewhere men laughing, and kids lapping popsicles. But there's newfound joy in San Diego, for mighty Dallas now likes pickles. <laughs> Unlike Herman Melville, I now felt like anything was possible. Like Germany in 1989, freedom was finally here. I just needed the wall to come down to hyperbolize the symbolic truth of denying myself simple pleasures. I left in and out went back to work, and made a list of all the things my Irish stubbornness had deprived me of. There's a list of tangible items I've pushed aside for years without ever really trying. Neil Young. The Beatles, Grey's Anatomy, Heineken. <laughs> I decided to reopen my world, and at then, the ripe old age of 29, that was a lot harder to do. First up, I had my friend make me a copy of the White Album and Neil Young's Silver and Gold. And you know what? Those albums are incredible. And Ringo is the worst one. <laughs> Next, I watched the pilot episode for Grey's, Anima Grey's Anatomy. And you know what? There's approximately 322 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I'm going to slow down on the list. I decided to go back to the thing that got him here in the first place, the dreaded triad of fruit, the pineapple, the banana, the strawberry. I set up a time to try these items and made sure I would be by myself. I shunned all onlookers to avoid overpowering influence. I got a fruit plate at a local cafe and downed a slice of pineapple. I winced like someone watching season 15 of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I can see why someone would like the pineapple, but those people have never had fun dip. <laughs> that joke deserves more. <laughs> a lot of you have not had a fun dip either. <laughs> then came the banana. I decided to try one in a Sunday. And you know what? Fucking terrible. There's no redeeming quality <laughs> in a banana. Last up, the dreaded strawberry. I went to my grandpa's house, who at the time was still alive. <laughs> and also grew strawberries. He picked some from his strawberry bush, and you know what? That should have been the red flag right there. Don't eat things off a bush. The only time you ever had any, you, the only time you ever have heard of anyone dying in the woods, it's because of a bear or they ate something off of a bush. My grandpa told me, shut it! He washed two from a fresh bowl and said, on the count of three, and don't chicken out. Like someone about to eat boogers on a dare. I closed my eyes and bit down. For somewhere in this fruitful land, the sun is shining bright. The chefs are cooking somewhere, and somewhere bellies are light, and somewhere kids are laughing, and men are enjoying roast duck. But there is no joy at Grandpa's, for strawberries still suck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And with that, let's...